In rock and roll news, there's a major speed metal tour out on the road right now, a multi-headliner extravaganza uniting Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, and Alice in Chains. It's billed as the Clash of the Titans, and it goes like this. Megadeth. Anthrax. Slayer. Is it a game of speed metal king of the hill, or just good loud fun? Megadeth's ever provocative Dave Mustaine has characterized the uniting of the three bands, along with opening act Alice in Chains, as a clash of the egos. Maybe as far as the managers go, yeah, but not with the bands. Clash of the managers. That's a crock. That's a crock. Dave Mustaine is going to say whatever he likes, whenever he likes. The whole thing on here in the beginning was like everybody was being a diplomat. Oh yeah, well we all like each other, we all get along. Well you know what, I don't hang out with any of those guys. It's hard enough touring with two bands and now you have three bands all headlining. So I was looking forward to a big mess, but it's, it's a long tour though. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we still got 41 shows left. Every night that the Titans clash, the audience is posed with a bit of a mystery. The order of the appearance for the bands changes each night and is never announced. A lot of people have asked us, you know, hey man, you closing, you opening, and you know, I mean, we've been kind of vague about it, but we would say we definitely don't open. Alice in Chains always opens the show, but for Anthrax, Megadeth, and Slayer, you find out when the music starts. You might think each band wants to go on last, but that's not what they're saying. The middle is the best spot, actually, the middle. Definitely the middle. The anxiety is so overwhelming, it drives me nuts. I mean, I'm like a, a caged tiger ready to go on stage and have to sit there and pace and listen to it almost three hours of music before you even go on. Whatever order they do go on, if you love this music, you'll get four full bands worth for the price of one. Twenty dollars. That's four bands with like, what, five, five to four guys. That's a lot of tight American buttocks for twenty bucks. You too can experience the Clash of the Titans when the tour arrives in Denver on Wednesday. Bands that wouldn't necessarily come see these bands individually, they get a chance to come see all three bands at once, so it's kind of like a package deal. Clash of Titans, it's well worth the money. Value for the dollar, yeah. damn it. Most metal for your money. This is the biggest tour of the year, of the summer. It's value for some period. That's it. Let's go play some football. <laughs> I think the Clash of the Titans is the clash of these three bands against, not so much against each other, but against yeah. everyone else, yeah. And, and uh, also, you know, you start pitting the bands against each other and that kind of shit, you know. And, um, the whole point is to bring in as many people as possible to see the show and to have the, all the audiences of all three of these bands and whoever else would want to come to see us. And if you got people reading the press that the bands hate each other and all this kind of crap and all this stupid stuff, and then, you know, you don't want the fans fighting, you know, the fans are going to come down and go, oh, fuck Megadeth, fuck Anthrax, fuck Slayer, you know, I hate them, I hate, you know, all this kind of shit. Um, you know, who needs that stuff? Because hey, it's not true, you know what I mean? I don't have any negative feelings about taking on a tour of this and you know. It, to me, it's the same as if we were out with just an opening band. Yet, the, due to the fact that there's a recession right now and all walks of life are getting bit by it, you know, we are delivering music that people want to hear, and we're also making it, you know, cost-effective. You know, they get their money's worth. Whether whether there's a band that gets a big shot out of this or not, it's to me it's kind of like, hey, you know, it's been a slow climb, I'm in no hurry, and I can do this forever, you know. And, you know, and if it's going to keep going the way it's going, it'll get bigger, and so what's my rush? <laughs> There's no competition on stage. We get up and just do our show and that's it, bottom line. Right. No matter who goes on after us, no matter who goes on before us. It's just us, our show. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who we're playing with. We feel the same about this tour as we did when we were with Iron Maiden or we did when we headlined the Headbangers tour. Any tour, we just go out and play.
feel there's competition. I, I really feel there's competition. That's the only way we're going to know who's working hard, you know. If you don't really care or you purport that you don't care, like somebody says, you know, I mean, then why even be in this business? I mean, the whole thing is like, you know, setting new standards to make music to. You know, as much as it's an event for the audience, it's still a Megadeth show as far as I'm concerned when we're on stage. So far, we've been the only band out of the three that are on the bill tonight that have been able to do arenas on our own. You know, uh, you know, I'm not sitting there. You know, we've done a f a f we did like three arenas, and and we played, in, you know, we played to counts of 8,000 and above. So I think we've kind of proven ourselves. You know, and this whole package started in Europe, thinking we could bring it to America, and we figured we wait till the summertime to do it. Obviously, harder just for the fact that go on later so uh, and we haven't been used to that haven't been opening for Maiden for so long before this tour and all of a sudden you're going on at 10 o'clock at night it's just a lot of hours to sit around yeah. and uh, but that besides that I mean as far as closing it was great because one weird thing about this tour was uh, when it was originally brought up to have the three bands and nobody wanted to close and every band offered the other band you guys could close all the time because nobody wanted to close the show because in Europe I guess Slayer had a hard time closing and uh, so of course we all well, we're not going to close, you know, we don't want to have to do that. So they came up with this rotation, and now after closing three nights and you see how well it went, you know, it's kind of like, man, yeah. we could have worked out something where we never would have had to have gone on first. So afraid at the beginning of this tour, I said, oh man, we're going to close this tour, everybody's going to be tired in the audience. It didn't happen. I mean, these kids are so hungry. The fans are just really loyal. They want more, and even after we go off, they want more, so it's cool. It pretty much depends on whether they sell beer at the venue. <laughs> they sell beer, true. and the kids like swirl around down in the pit for a while, you know. But like after about three or four hours, it's not a long time to take. But we uh, we've closed a couple of shows as well up to this point. And, uh, I like going on earlier, actually. Me too. You know, I'd rather like just get in, get out, and everyone gets hurt. You know? So you can sleep and go right to bed after. Like tonight, we'll, we'll go on, on the second one tonight, Anthrax. I just want to go to sleep right after. Get up, take some sun in the morning. Beauty's beautiful. I've been enjoying the shows quite a lot. Uh, you know, as with anything, when you go into a, a new environment with new people, you have to readjust and, and uh, adapt and improvise. And there's certain people that had to be integrated and you know they had to be acclimated. We have new gear. A whole new PA. It usually takes about a week to get everything broken in. Uh, we have a new sound man that took a while for us to get, you know, uh, adjusted to the band because he came in doing one show in a little club in Hollywood, and then, which I won't say what it is, but um, that, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we've had a few shows live. This is going to be, I think, our sixth show. Sixth or seventh. Seventh. Seven, yeah. Seven. Lucky seven, what do you know? <laughs> I go out there, you know, I'm jamming away and I'm singing and I'm giving it my all, you know, like, you know, I'm just like sweating up a whole fucking storm, you know, and, and after I'm done, it's like, it's a great release, you know, it's like I'm done, it's like, you know, I can survive the rest of the day. The shit out of each other, and that's you call that having a good time, right to it, just don't involve any part of the building, and don't involve anybody else's space, you know. I mean, it got to the point where I would sit there and get together with security guards and say, listen, dudes, you know, when the kids come on a barricade, you know, you know, let them fall over. Don't pull them over. Let them fall over. They hurt themselves. You're not, you know, you're not being a part of it. Pick them up. Walk them to the side. Just let them go to the very back, and they'll make their way to the front. Something that people remember, and that, that people, like, buy a program and they take home a piece of it, you know? It's kind of a piece of history, which I think is a cool part about it. 
one idea that I heard was uh, we should just everyone put as many marshals on the stage as possible and just everyone play whatever they want, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Even though there is competition and a competitive edge amongst all of us, that doesn't mean that we can't be friends.